if we've got these angles here, we've got these different clips here, there's a few other controls that we can see here to control the angle viewer. So first of all, if you go to the settings up here, we can choose how many angles to see at once. So we can see two angles at once, and then we change see these little controls down here. These are the bank controls. So right now I've got two banks. The second bank only has one angle. The first bank has two angles. And so you can see the two angles at a time or and then switch between those banks at a, you know at any given time. You can also set it to four up, which is the default. And in this case, we've only got three angles, so that works. If we had more than three angles, we could go to like a nine angle up, where we could see nine different angles, or even sixteen, where you can see sixteen different angles all at the same time. Now, of course, that's pretty unusual. You're gonna be working with that many angles, but uh, so we'll go back to our basic four angle view here. And here we can see, you know, all three angles at the same time. But as you're working with more clips, it is very helpful to work with those banks and to be able to choose, you know, how many angles you want to view at any given time. Another set of controls here that you have in the angle viewer is the text here that appears on the screen. So you can hide that. Let's just turn that off for a second so that there's no, Im no text. You just see the images and you can just, you know, base what you're looking at, you know, on the image. Or you can say, show me the name of that clip, which is going to say, in this case, just silver ring one, two, and three, not all that helpful. But you can also say, show me the name of the angle. And then that uses the data from that angle field that we entered over there in the info window. And that, in this case, can be really helpful. So I can see at a glance, do I want to cut to the left balcony shot, the orchestra shot, the onstage shot, and so forth. And so that little uh, overlay is really helpful. There's also a time code overlay, which will show you the source time code based on those original clips. And that sometimes is useful, sometimes it's not useful. In this case, it really has no benefit, so I'm going to hide that. We don't really need to see that. But being able to see the name of the, the clip there is really helpful. Notice, by the way, that in the viewer, in the regular viewer, you always see that name. You can't hide or show that. That's always on. And then finally, I just want to point out that the little bank control down here does actually show you where the angle is. So you see how the bottom, you know, it's a little mock-up of that layout. If I go to the two up here, you can see if we're in this bank right now and neither of them are the active angle, we can see at a glance, oh, well, the active angle is in that other bank. And again, in this example, with only three, three shots, it's really not that big a deal. But if you had seven or eight shots and you might have three or four different banks or you had two four-up banks, it's really helpful to be able to see at a glance where my currently active angle is uh, based on the little yellow highlight there in the bank control. So these are the main controls you've got available to you here in the angle viewer.